go back. Look, we're gonna finish, keep digging into the TI thing. You can't tell me that there's, there's not a coincidence that all this occurred right around when what happened in the black community around that time that led or that that happened to coincide with the transformation of hip hop into one of the most destructive forces in the history of this country. What, what happened around that time, around the mid nineties, around 1994, 95, Bill Clinton's in office promoting the crime bill, him and Joe Biden, him and Joe Biden promoting the crime bill where they wanted to mass exterminate black people and send everybody, send everybody away. What happened around that time? I'm gonna give you a hint. It involved somebody by the name of Louis Farrakhan doing something that had never been done in the history of this country, the Million Man March. The Million Man March. They watched, they watched Farrakhan and, and a few other people that went along with him. This was it, they, they, they had unity amongst the black leadership. Farrakhan's one of the best unifiers that I've seen because he's incredibly diplomatic. He's able to work with people he disagrees with heavily. I can't do that all the time. I'm not that, I'm not as disciplined as it. Maybe in a few years I will, but I will be. But right now I, I can't, you know, if I don't like you, it's hard for me to work with you. But Farrakhan is incredibly disciplined. And they pulled together over a, well over a million black men, all for the purpose of building their community, serving their families building wealth, loving and protecting their children. And I want to hear yes or no, yes or no, yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. Do you think that seeing of over a million black men all gathered at the Capitol at the same damn time, do you think that that scared the living shit out of every white person in America damn near? Do you, do, do you think, especially given that this is right in the middle of the crime bill that they all supported, where they said, yes, lock them up. They're all super predators. We need them out of our communities because they're scary, right? Don't, do you think that, that it scared the hell out of them to see o over a million, some say as much as 2 million black men all together listening to one man saying, yes, I will, I vow, I promise, I will take care of my family. I promise I will build my community. I'm gonna go home and be a better man. Even the rapper Too Short at the same time was so inspired, he came out with a great song. Anybody remember that song? You uh, you should be getting it, getting wild, getting this good. And he made that song for black men saying, get up off your ass, go get something, go be your best, work hard. I mean, his message was very similar to the message y'all hear from me today. It was very similar. So hip hop lost its way, and it wasn't because hip hop just happened to lose its way. It's because uh, it's because the government helped hip hop lose its way. Uh, hip hop didn't lose its way just ironically or, or coincidentally. Hip hop lost its way because corporations and music and record labels owned and run by white white people and 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 people from the Jewish community. Let's just be real. They're brilliant people. They're brilliant people. Brilliant people. And and, and part of that brilliance means that they are in extensive control of the media. The reason I bring that up is not to be anti-Semitic. I bring it up to be truthful. Number one and number two to say to point out the hypocrisy. To kind of say like, how in the world can the people who had to deal with the terror of Adolf Hitler turn into Adolf Hitler. Like, how can you literally put out music that is mass promoting the death and destruction of millions of black people? Like, didn't y'all go through that already? Is that one of those things where abused people grow up and abuse other people? Is that what it is? Is that, is that like, like transference of trauma? Is that, I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. So, so hip hop lost its way. So, you know, what I love right now is that I see hip hop once again, finding its way back. I see, Guys like Killer Mike, David Banner, rapper T.I. leading the way on a new way of thinking for the community in which they use the power of the rapper to promote a message of the people, a message of empowerment, something that is intelligent, something that is going to help us grow. I think that is a wonderful thing. And then it's not just those guys, the younger artists are looking up to these guys and paying attention. They're they're listening. They're in, incorporating that message. Right. So so you're seeing you know, this amazing transformation of the community that wasn't in existence seven, eight years ago. I used to be a big critic of Jay-Z back around 2013, 2014, because I was like, Jay-Z is not rapping about shit. Like he's rapping about things that don't make any sense, that aren't going to help anybody improve their lives. Like, like, what are you rapping about, bro? This doesn't make any sense. I had a, a three hour long debate 
with a guy who was uh, like Beyonce's tour manager. He managed the the a different venue she would go to or something. He did something important like that. It was some important job. Somebody wanted me to meet him because they were like, oh, you know, boy, doc, you should talk to this, this guy because he can tell you that Jay-Z and Beyonce really aren't what you think and blah, 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 blah. And we talked for a long time and I really respected this guy a lot. We had a great conversation, but I was like, you know, and so and he was telling me, he said, you know, Jay, Jay's actually very conscious and very black and he cares about black people and blah, blah. And I said, yeah, man, but a man is not defined by what he believes. A man is defined by what he does. Like, like I could tell you that I believe in saving money, but if I don't, then it doesn't matter. If I, I could tell you that, like when I was fat, when I was overweight before I started running, I believed in being healthy, but I was like 70 pounds overweight. So which matters more? What I believe, what I think I, what I know I should be doing or what I actually do? A man is defined by what he does. And that's very important to understand. Now I'm not a critic of Jay-Z anymore. I'm not a critic. I'm a supporter of Jay-Z because you saw a transition of Jay-Z's music. You see a transition of their message as a couple. I think that Jay-Z and Beyonce are tremendous assets for the black community and, and that what they're doing is great. I don't think that they have to be uh, criticized on the level that they were criticized before because I'm very happy with the, with, with the way they're using their power. I think it's awesome. I love it. 